So I've been talking a lot about Snapchat test accounts that were set up as young teenagers and immediately getting served things like dick pics and requests for nudes by accounts that Snapchat recommended to the user. But I hadn't done a test yet myself. So here we go. I signed up for Snapchat as a newly 14-year-old girl with a birthday of March 10th, 2010. I did not connect any of my contacts to the account, though I was asked to do this twice during setup. I wanted to see specifically who Snapchat recommends that I connect with, having none of my contacts. I added the first 10 people they recommended who I did not know by name. Now in my test, these people did not contact me. Not yet. It's been a day, but so far I've not been contacted by strangers. But this next part is what concerned me. I clicked on Spotlight, which is a reel of videos that Snapchat recommends. They say that Spotlight is the easiest way to discover the world of Snapchat in one place, and it shines a light on the most entertaining snaps, no matter who created them. So I started scrolling through the Spotlight area to see what videos Snapchat would recommend to me, a 14-year-old new user. I probably scrolled for about an hour the first day. And when I tell you that I felt physically ill, I am not joking. Here are some of the highlights of what I was served. This was the vibe of the majority of the content being served to a 14-year-old female user. There were other types of posts like beauty tips, but I'm telling you 98% of the videos were simply not appropriate for a 14-year-old. There were references to polygamy. There were people who were super drunk, so much bad language, so much sexualized content. Nearly every video had a subtle or not so subtle sexual nature to it. Videos with someone answering the question, the dumbest way you managed to get laid, or the kinkiest thing you've done in the bedroom. There was so much content about cheating boyfriends, recommendations for spicy books like romantic novels for a 14-year-old, videos about burner phones, literally introducing a kid on how to sneak access to certain platforms without their parents knowing, and so many ads for weight loss products or at-home workouts. And this video from inside of a strip club, plus obvious videos saying things like 18 plus and referencing that they can click through to see actual pornography. I cannot believe that this is what our young teenagers are watching. There was not one moment of scrolling through these videos where I felt empowered or hopeful or loved or educated on anything at all. This is not something our children should be seeing or using. There is no benefit to our kids seeing this content. If Snapchat was just a platform where kids can talk to their friends, then maybe I would get my head around it. But it is so much more than that. Kids are buying fake pills and dying. Kids are getting exploited for nude photos, then dying by suicide. Kids are getting contacted by adult predators. And kids are seeing manipulative, sexual, and dangerous content. All of these things are verified to be happening on Snapchat, yet we're letting our kids go on Snapchat. If they want to talk to their friends, they can text them. I'm sorry, but I'm infuriated. I posted a little bit about this already, and some parents are saying, my child's feed is not like that. Unfortunately, the algorithm can change in a moment. It's tricky. You may check one day and it's fine, and the next day it's not fine. If you're a parent, please ask yourself, does your child need Snapchat? Truly need it. I don't know why a kid would need it. They want it. Their friends have it. I get it that it sucks to not be chatting where all your friends are chatting. But are you willing to let your child be inundated with this type of content and access to strangers and predators? After talking with so many families, use of platforms like this will change your child. I'd even go as far as to say their childhood will end when they sign up for Snapchat. But if you truly feel that there is a need for your child to have Snapchat, you have to check on it. Obviously, you won't be able to review their chats because they disappear, but look at their feed and the spotlight area like every single day. Let them know they're going to see videos that will concern them and that they can come to you to chat about it. And let them know that strangers are going to contact them and they need to keep their private information and photos private. Now, there's also the issue that kids are sneaking access to Snapchat. This is easy on an iPhone. It's impossible on a kid's safe phone like a Bark phone or a Gab. This is why I always recommend a kid's safe phone, but even better, no phone? Delay the use of a smartphone as long as possible. Start with a watch for basic communication and GPS tracking. Again, parents, if it's an iPhone, you're going to lose control. I've heard it hundreds of times. The parental controls are not good enough. The iPhone is built for adults, not kids. I have a full podcast episode on this if you need more info. So I'm going to continue to keep an eye on this test Snapchat account, and I'm going to continue to highlight how harmful Snapchat can be. That's not to take away from other platforms, but Snapchat really is one of a kind in what it's doing to kids. 
And if you're in the Los Angeles area on April 11th, there is a Snapchat rally where I'll be speaking. This is hosted by the Alexander Neville Foundation and a few other organizations. You'll get to meet families who have lost children due to harms on Snapchat. We'll be talking specifically about Snapchat's misleading and dangerous ad campaign, less social media, more Snapchat, and advocating for more transparency and responsibility coming from Snap. If they're going to provide a space for kids to connect, it should be safe. Right now, it's not. And that's not fair to parents, and it's not fair to kids. I'll include the rally info in the description below, and I hope to see you there.